CBS News has confirmed that one of the shooters behind this week's terror attack in California had pledged her allegiance to ISIS. The FBI today, though, said that Tashfin Malik was not on anyone's watch list and was not on the Saudi government's radar at all and was not suspecting of having any links to any radical group. Since the bloodshed, many Muslim leaders across the country have come out in condemnation of the attack. Earlier, Elaine Quijano and Meg Oliver spoke with Leila Lalumi, who wrote the article, My Life as a Muslim in the West's Gray Zone. We asked Leila about whether she's surprised that a woman was involved in the violence. It might not have been seen with ISIS, but certainly this isn't the first time that a woman has taken up arms uh, for this kind of a cause. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not um, entirely shocked that it's a woman. I think what's shocking is that anyone at all uh, would pledge allegiance to, to ISIS. Leila, in your article, you write that terrorist attacks affect us all in the same way. However, for Muslims, there's an additional layer of grief as we become subjects of suspicion. How do you deal with that, especially after what we're just reporting here? Um, of course, there, there's uh, the data has shown that after every uh, terrorist attack, uh, um, there are attacks against Muslims that follow. Um, and these range from anything from uh, things like arson or attacks against places of worship to uh, uh, physical attacks or, or discrimination. Um, I think that this is something that unfortunately American Muslims are now used to. This has been something that's been happening uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, so certainly this is something that American Muslims are used to. It doesn't make it any easier to deal with, um, but that is the unfortunate reality. Uh, so Leila, the title of your article again is My Life as a Muslim in the West Gray Zone. Uh, explain what exactly is the gray zone? This is where you live. Um, what does that mean for you and other uh, Muslims who are living in the gray zone? Well, the term the gray zone was used by ISIS in its, uh, in its propaganda magazine, which is called Dabiq, which is issued monthly. It's actually a very glossy magazine. And in the February issue of that magazine earlier this year, uh, there was an article called The Extinction of the Gray Zone, in which the uh, writers basically praised the attacks of September 11th and said that these attacks made uh, uh, visible for the world two camps the camp of uh, uh, ISIS and the camp of the Crusaders. And basically the gray zone is the space inhabited by any Muslim who does not uh, uh, join ISIS uh, in their fight against the Crusaders. So when you, uh, when you think about the gray zone, it's actually an extremely vast space. It is basically uh, the vast majority of Muslims, including American Muslims, and especially American Muslims, because one of the things that the article also makes clear is that um, uh, ISIS insists that the West is an in inhospitable place for Muslims, that, the, that Muslims will never be accepted in the West, uh, and that uh, they that this isn't the place for them. And so they want Muslims to basically join ranks with them. Well, um, let's talk about by, the, by, well, let's talk about what the leader of ISIS said, because you're alluding to that, and I think it's really important. Um, you mentioned that he wants to compel the Crusaders or the West to actively destroy the gray zone themselves. Muslims in the West will quickly find themselves between one and two choices, either apostatize or emigrate to the Islamic State and thereby escape persecution. So uh, how right. is the Muslim community dealing with that? Well, I think this is this is this is the problem. This is the fundamental problem, which is that the vast majority of Muslims oppose ISIS. In fact, uh, Muslims uh, make up the majority of the victims of ISIS, and they also make up the majority of the people who are fighting ISIS. Um, but. Uh, ISIS insists that that gray zone cannot exist and wants to destroy it. And they've, they view the persecution that, for example, uh, Muslims encounter in the West as working in their favor because it will drive Muslims away from the West and towards their camp. So I think it's, it's, it's in all of our interests to preserve that gray zone. Um, in my view, this is also a question of identity because I think that obviously, I mean, I identify as a Muslim, but I also identify as many other things. I identify as as a woman, I identify as a Moroccan, I identify as a writer, I identify as a citizen. There are many, many different identities that we have. But under ISIS's view, the only identity that you can have 
is to be a Muslim and to be on their side and to fight against the Crusaders. So, uh, I, to me, this is part of the, the issue that we're dealing with, is that the more we insist on these, uh, th this polarized view of the world under which people are either, um, either uh, Muslims are bad and everybody else is good, that kind of polarized view is exactly what ISIS uh, has and what ISIS wants. All right. Leila Lalami, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.